All right, so today's hot topic is transgenic organisms. Uh, but before we get into that, we're going to talk about genetic engineering. So how does our understanding of genetics affect our lives? We talked a lot about genetics. What are some thoughts? So, yes, how we understand them. Okay. So we can understand why certain diseases come about, how they come about. So we talked a lot about pedigrees, right? Yeah. Last week. Um, and those can also play a role because that can show us family history. So today we are going to spend some time talking about transgenic organisms, um, GMOs, and that's what your uh, web quest is all about today. So before we get into that, genetic engineering. So genetic engineering is making changes in the DNA code of a living organism. So what scientists do is cut and paste DNA from different sources um, in order to get recombinant DNA. So this specific technique um, called bacterial transformation allows a cell to take in foreign DNA and be able to make it its own. So as you can see up here yesterday, we saw this uh, when we talked about gene therapy, we saw the vectors, okay? And how we put replacement genes in. So this is a similar technique, except we're cutting and pasting DNA from different sources. So when we do that, that's where we get recombinant DNA. So just like we saw yesterday, bacteria have circular DNA called a plasmid that can be exchanged easily between cells. So just like we saw yesterday as well, okay, we take restriction enzymes. Those are what do the cutting and they cut DNA at a specific spot. They cut specific sequences, okay? Then that vector or virus that we also saw yesterday delivers the new gene into the bacteria. So now the new genes are inserted into that bacteria's DNA. Once that happens, the bacteria can now express proteins from the new gene. So this works very similar to what we saw yesterday. So come in, restriction enzymes, and they cut. Then that vector delivers the new gene into the bacteria. New genes are now inserted and now it can express the protein from the new genes that were inserted. So up here just shows you a picture of how that actually happens. Okay, so there's our DNA up at the top that we cut. And what'd we cut it with? Restriction enzyme, right. Okay, and then we take that DNA that vi uh, the virus, the vector, and we put it in. And then eventually those proteins can now be expressed in the new genes. just a fun little example of transgenic organisms. Okay, so what exactly are transgenic organisms? They are organisms that have DNA from another species. So these are some examples. So bacteria can be engineered to produce insulin. We talked about insulin when we talked about diabetes. So this is um, 
needed to treat diabetes. Plants can be engineered to be resistant to diseases and pests. And also uh, bacteria can be engineered to eat oil to clean up spills, just like the BP oil spill off of the Gulf Coast. Bacteria can be engineered to clean up oil spills. Well, the oil can be dangerous to the animals. Depends on how it's engineered. If it's engineered to, to clean up the oil, then it's engineered to clean up the oil spill, not to irritate the animal. Yeah, they, uh, just to add on to what she said, they, they actually eat the hydrocarbons. They break down the hydrocarbon ring in the oil. And what you're doing with them, so they explored this with the Exxon Valdez, which in Prince William Sound, which was the very first one that they engineered this for. They actually get the bacteria that exist in nature and just have them proliferate through the process of mitosis. And then they feed them the necessary stuff to kind of point them in the right direction. So the bacteria that are in nature are already natural. So they're not, it's not like you're going to jump in the water and they're going to eat your leg off. So they just use the ones that are already there, but they're capable of breaking down the rings that are in the hydrocarbons of the oil. Thank you for sharing. So then this takes us into a GMO, which is a genetically modified organism. I'm, I'm sure we have all heard of these. Yes. So who goes to the grocery store in here? When you go to the grocery store, you see things that say GMO and you see things that say non GMO. Yes. Okay. So something that is genetically modified, which you see up here, Okay, is the result of a laboratory process where genes from DNA of one species are extracted and then incorporated into the genes of an unrelated plant or animal. Whereas something that is non-GMO, what is that also known as? Anybody? When you go to the grocery store, what do you... It's, yes, but what's another name? What's another name? Organic. There you go. That's what I was looking for. Okay, so it's organic. So if you go to the store and you buy something that's organic, that means that it has not been modified. It's natural, okay? Organic is definitely better for you, yes. Uh, but a lot of times it also costs a lot more money because, what? So it's because there might not be as much quantity of that, whereas something that is genetically modified, they can mass produce. So think of, and you're going to see some of this today in your web quest, but like eggs and chickens. Okay. Um, so up here are some examples of genetically modified food. So things like corn and potatoes, those are big ones, rice, uh, plus some of the other ones that I had mentioned, but. So um, why would a steroid, like put steroids in the cows? Because wouldn't that be genetically Yes, sir. Yep, sure would. Um, and that's what happens. That's so when they inject chickens or cows with all of that, that's why you see dairy products up here too. Um, that now becomes a genetically modified organism. And then the last thing that I am going to mention is cloning. And this is making an identical copy of an organism. Uh, a great example of this is Dolly. Anybody ever heard of Dolly? Yeah. Some of us, okay. So Dolly was actually created in a lab in 1997. That was, uh, that was a hot, hot topic back then. <laughs> huh? A sheep. They cloned a sheep, yes. They made a sheep from a single cell. From another sheep. They cloned a sheep, yes. 
okay? So when we clone something, okay, the chromosome number of the new organism is obviously going to be the exact same as the original because we are making a replica. We're making an identical copy. So then all of the DNA, the features and characteristics would be the exact same. Yep, Dolly was a sheep. So if I really wanted to just say this will have but we have to be fair, fair and rich Could I close myself? All right. So is cloning easy? So it's not always successful and it typically does not result in a healthy adult animal. So when they cloned Dolly, it actually took 277 tries. Um, so human cloning is illegal in the United States. Um, many attempts would result in some of the following things that you see up here. So surrogate mothers can experience miscarriages, stillbirths, or even um, having a baby with deformities. 